Good morning, class. As you can tell, uh, very cold in my office again, but I guess I'm gonna have to come out of this little cocoon here and we're gonna go over solution concentration. So let's jump into our slides again. Oh, here they are. You've heard of some solution concentrations already from Chem 1. Um, probably the most common or the one you've definitely seen uh, was molarity. We're gonna look at, of course, two new terms, uh, dilute and concentrated. Uh, concentrated solution is when we have a large quantity of solute uh, in that solution and dilute is if it's the concentration is very, very small. Um, so most of the times what we're probably looking at is gonna be a dilute solution. There's molarity again, capital M, like I said, you're used to seeing that, uh, shouldn't be anything new, but we're also gonna look at things like molality, mole fraction, um, percentage you've seen to some degree, but parts per mass, things like parts per million, parts per billion you may have heard of, but not worked with. So a lot of those things are gonna be new. Um, so we're gonna look at those, what exactly are the units of those, and how do we use those? So first, preparing a solution. How do we make that? Well, we need to figure out what's the concentration of the solution gonna be, and how are we expressing it? Are we expressing it as molarity, or molality, or whatever, and then how much do we need? So in this example, if we're gonna do a 5% by mass, that means we have mass of solute and mass of solution. So we're gonna have five grams of solute for every 100 grams of solution. If we're gonna make a 100 gram solution, we gotta go out and mass five grams. If we're gonna make a 200 gram solution, we're gonna have to mass 10 grams. In this example here, we're gonna do molarity again, sodium chloride. We're gonna make a one molar solution of sodium chloride. So we have to find out the molar mass of sodium chloride, go mass out a mole, 58.44 grams, add that to this. Now, because molarity is moles per liter of solution, we don't want a liter of solvent, we want a liter of solution. So I can't just add a liter of water to this and be good. Those sodium chloride crystals have mass, they occupy volume. If I add a liter of water to this, what I find is gonna happen is after that dissolves, I'm gonna have more than a liter of solution. So I need to get this completely dissolved. I might only add this much water, make sure the sodium chloride's completely dissolved, and then bring it up to this mark so we have exactly a liter of solution. And that's how I'd make a one molar solution of sodium chloride. And it might vary a little uh, if it's molal or something different, but we're gonna look at those units and how that works. So again, there's molarity. You've seen it before. What I like to do so I don't get lost or I don't confuse myself, um, as soon as I see molarity, let's say we're told we have a 2.25 molar solution of sodium chloride. That capital M means molarity. They're always the same units. So what I'm gonna do is rewrite that instead of capital M, I'm gonna rewrite it as 2.25 moles of sodium chloride per liter of solution. So I can see my units immediately, I know what I'm working with, and if we're getting to say, uh, moles of this, we could just multiply by whatever the volume they gave us was and cancel out that volume term or whatever it happens to be. But I can see the units, I know what I need to cancel, um, I know how to do that, how to get there. Uh, I'm not gonna confuse myself or throw myself off. Next. Molality, a little bit different, sounds very similar. Uh, probably again to, to screw with you, uh, mess you up, but molality different than molarity, lowercase m instead of an uppercase. And now what we're looking at is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. So not the solution now, but just the solvent and not the volume, but the mass typically or specifically in kilograms. So if we were looking at the exact same uh, solution now of, of sodium chloride or we expressed it differently. So instead of getting moles per liter when we made it, we made it a little different way. We have now a 2.25 molal solution of sodium chloride, lowercase m instead of uppercase. And what this means is we would have 2.25 moles of sodium chloride, but now in a kilogram of, let's say this is aqueous, so whatever our solvent is, since it's aqueous, it'd be water. So expressing it differently than here, different units that we would need to cancel or convert to. Oops, sorry. 
conceptual connection. If you combine 25 grams of a solute that has a mass of 25 grams per mole with 100 grams of solvent, what is the molality? So let's go in again, thinking about those units. We were told we had 25 grams of a substance. The molar mass of that substance is 25 grams per mole. We were told we have 100 grams of our solvent. We want to know what's the concentration in molality. So we're going to have to get moles over kilograms of solvent. Well, if our mass is 25 and our molar mass is 25, 25 divided by 25 should be one mole of whatever that solute happens to be. And we want to put that over a kilogram of solvent. Well, we have 100 grams. 1,000 grams in a kilogram, divide 100 by 1,000, should be 0.1 kilograms of solvent. And when we take 1 divided by 0.1, you can see that in this case, we have a 10 molal solution of whatever that solute happened to be. So not too difficult, but different units than what you're used to working with, probably. Uh, so let's go back into our slides. And we'll see, did they get the same thing? Yes. So they did it right, or we did it right, or we're uh, both wrong in the same way for some reason. But no, this is the correct answer. And, and it's what reason it is, is from how we worked it out there. Um, parts per. So this is something that you've probably heard before, and maybe you know how it works, maybe you don't. Uh, it's something that the EPA uses a lot. Environmental chemists will use this quite a bit. Uh, parts per million, parts per billion, something like that. You could measure this as mass. So uh, usually the easiest way to do this is to keep them in the same unit. So if it's parts per million, it's going to be uh, the mass of that uh, component we're interested in, the solute, over the mass of the whole thing. And how many units of this do we have per million units of that? Percentage is really just parts per hundred. Um, Parts per million, like I said, is parts of that solute for every million parts of the solution. It's probably just a little confusing now. Don't worry, we're going to do a few worked problems, and it'll start to make a little bit more sense. Uh, so here's parts per million, mass of solute, mass of solution. Ideally, these units agree. Uh, if for some reason we had to do mass and volume, we'd need density so we could convert that volume into mass. So we're going to take whatever mass our solute is over the mass of the solution and then multiply by a million to get that into parts per million. But this usually is going to be noticeably less solute than there is solution. Parts per billion, same thing. Uh, small amounts, uh, how, much, how many parts of that solute do we have per billion parts of that solution? And we could do mass and mass or volume and volume, but ideally those units on top and bottom agree. And then uh, once we have those mass of that solute divided by the mass of the solution multiplied now by a billion, to convert that into parts per billion. And again, this will make a little bit more sense, hopefully, when we do a couple worked uh, examples here. Mole fraction. Uh, how many, if we have a two-component mixture, we're looking at component A, um, what fraction of that whole thing is A? So we take how many moles of A we have divided by the total number of moles, which in this case would be moles of A plus moles of B. If we had a three-component mixture, we had A, B, and C, and I wanted to know the mole fraction of A, it'd be moles of A, over the total moles, which would be moles A plus moles B plus moles C. Um, mole fraction should always add up to one. So you, we could have 0.1% of it being A, you know, or, or, or I should say, sorry, 10% of it being A, 20% being B, and then 70% being C. All those mole fractions should always add up to one. Uh, and we could convert that to a mole percentage if we wanted. So if we found the mole fraction of A was 0.1, Multiply by 100, that's 10% of that. Uh, converting, again, just really focus on your units. Make sure, uh, if you don't remember, right off the top of your head, capital M is moles per liter, rewrite it as moles per liter. If you don't remember off the top of your head that lowercase m, molality, is mole solute per kilogram solvent, then rewrite it as that. So you can see those units right away and start working with them. So we're going to jump in now, work a few problems, uh, and that'll be that for today. Uh, and then hopefully you can go into the end of chapter, the dynamic study modules, start working through those. So let's start um, again with uh, molality. Let's say we're told, um, excuse me, we want to make um, a 0.2 molal solution of potassium chloride 
And um, we're told we want, um, or in 200 grams of water. So we know the 0.2 molal potassium chloride is the same thing as 0.2 moles KCl over one kilogram of our solvent, which in this case is water. So what we need to do is we don't have a kilogram of water. We have something else. So we're going to use that. We're going to cancel out our mass units, and we're going to find out how many moles of potassium chloride we need. And then once we know moles, so what they're going to ask us for is what mass of potassium chloride in grams do we need to make this solution? So when we get to moles, then we can get to mass. So a couple ways we could do this, we could keep this as kilograms per solvent. We could multiply how much we're actually going to multiply that or convert how much we actually have here to kilograms and then multiply through. So if we have 200 grams of water, divide by 1,000, that's the same as 0.2 kilograms of our solvent, of our water. Multiply through, and we can see should be 0.04, oops, 0.2 times 0.2, yes. So what we're going to need is 0.04 moles of potassium chloride. If we mass that out and dissolve it in 200 grams of water, we'll have a 0.2 molal solution. So now the last step is to go from moles of potassium chloride to the mass of potassium chloride. And here we're going to need to use the molar mass. Molar mass, look that up, uh, should be 39.1 plus 35.45, gives us 74.55 grams in one mole and multiply by 0.04 and we get 2.982 grams of potassium chloride. So this is how much potassium chloride we would need to mass out and dissolve in 200 grams of water to make that 0.2 molal solution. Let's try some parts per million. Let's say we're told we have 98 micrograms of lead in 15 grams of soil. We want to know what's the concentration of that lead in parts per million. So first thing we're going to do is divide solute by solvent or the solution, sorry, the total solution is the soil and we want the units to agree. So I want my top to be grams and my bottom to be grams. If this is 98 micrograms, that's the exact same thing as 98 times 10 to the negative 6 grams of lead, micro to grams. And we have 15 grams of soil. That goes on the bottom. Solute divided by solution, units agree. What do we get? Something very small, 6.53 times 10 to the negative six. And then the last step is multiply by 10 to the six or multiply by a million to find out what that is in parts per million. And in this case, it would be 6.53 parts per million or PPM. Let's go to the next one. Uh, let's say now we want to make a 20 part per million solution of sodium chloride. We want to know how many grams of sodium chloride will we need to go into 1,000 grams of solution. So we're going to kind of work backwards on this one. If we have a 20 part per million sodium chloride solution, our end step usually is to multiply by 1 million. This time we're going to divide by it. So that's going to give us 0. 0.00002 um, grams of sodium chloride per every one gram of solution. Now we have more than a gram of solution, so now we're gonna find out how much of the sodium chloride would we need for a thousand grams and not one gram, because the parts per million is really just a ratio between the two. So here, times, oops, times 1,000, grams of solution, and we get 
0.02 grams of sodium chloride, or it'd be the same thing as 20 milligrams. So if we wanted to make a 20 part per million solution of sodium chloride, we could come back, we could check our work. We could say, if we take 0 0.02 grams of the sodium chloride, we put it in a thousand grams of the solution like we had, and we multiply by a million, do we get that 20 parts per million like we had? Yes, yes we do. So that is how much we would need of the sodium chloride to make a 20 part per million solution with a thousand grams of that. Uh, last one, let's try a mole fraction. Let's say, uh, again, we have that potassium chloride. So let's say um, we're told that we have uh, 30 grams of potassium chloride in 200 grams of water. I want to know what's the mole fraction for the potassium chloride. So I need to find out how many moles. We have only a two-component mixture. So I need to find out how many moles of potassium chloride we have and how many moles of water we have. So I'm going to take the potassium chloride, divide by its molar mass, uh, which was yep 74.55 grams. And that's 0 0.402 moles. Do the same thing with the water. 200 grams of water divided by the molar mass. And that is 11.10 moles of water. We want to know the mole fraction for potassium chloride. So that's going to be the moles of potassium chloride over the total moles. In this case, since there's only two things, it'd be the moles of one plus the moles of the other. So we're going to have 0 0.402 divided by 0 0.402 plus 11.1. And our mole fraction here should be 0 0.035. So 0 0.035 mole fraction of potassium chloride, or if I wanted to multiply by 100, 3.5% of the total moles there are potassium chloride. Uh, really no different than if you wanted to find out you know, how, many, how many people had blue shirts in your class. You'd have to take how many people had blue shirts divided by the total number of people in the class. So if you had uh, 10 people wearing blue shirts and 300 people not wearing blue shirts, the total number of people in the class is 310. So 10 divided by 310 would give you the fraction of people wearing blue shirts in your classroom. So that's how mole fraction works. If we had a third component, we'd have to add that in there. So again, hopefully this was helpful. Um, hopefully you've kind of figured out a few things at least here and um, work those problems, come to office hours, we'll work through some more. Um, as you do the more and more, you'll get used to that. You'll remember what units you have to cancel. Um, hopefully this was good. I'll see you soon.